to adopt the agenda. And we have two late items that I'd like to uh, put on. One is 5D, which is a letter from the Oyster River Fire Department um, regarding mutual aid agreements for our fire department. And 7C, which is an issue about the uh, safety deposit box for you. So if there are no other additions, then I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Alan? Okay, Cleve, second. All in favor? Okay, carried. Um, we do have a uh, presentation tonight under petitions and delegations, but we'll deal with that as um, business arising under item 4B. Bill Ellis is going to give us a presentation on the matter that we tabled at our last meeting. So then we go into business arising. So the, uh, the first item of business is at the uh, last meeting we tabled a conflict of interest policy. This is one of the uh, strong commitments. Yes, sorry. Um, I didn't. Oh, we didn't approve the minutes from last meeting. Pardon me. <laughs> okay. We'll approve the minutes of the February meeting first. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Okay. Carried. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll go on to business arising. Um, we tabled the conflict of interest policy at our last meeting. This is a, uh, a commitment that this board has made to the community about uh, putting in writing um, some guidelines regarding conflict of interest. It's been a bit of a challenge because there is no legislation that governs improvement districts regarding conflict of interest. So although municipalities and regional districts are governed by the community charter that has very specific rules around conflict of interest, that charter does not apply to improvement districts. So um, because of that anomaly, we uh, sent this draft policy off to our lawyers who uh, gave us quite a bit of feedback from it um, that we have incorporated and uh, essentially um, we have agreed to set out a number of rules that are based on uh, common law principles and wherever possible um, those rules have been drafted so that they're um, mirrored in the community charter so you've had the uh, policy now for a month um, so unless there are some uh, changes, I'd like a motion to adopt this policy as presented. I'll make that motion. Yeah. Second. Alan? Okay. Any other discussion about it? Uh, just once again, uh, have we posted this on the, or will we post this on the uh, website? I think we should, yeah. Yes. Just, uh, I know we may not be doing all the policies, but it's just not a lot of people have some interest in and I think it should be posted so if they, yeah. would, uh, they can read it off the website if they... Yeah. Okay. So all in favor? Well, okay. oh, sorry. Sorry, before. What could you uh, call an unfinished type of interest? What page are you on? What page, please? First page. Yes. What paragraph? Fiduciary. Pecuniary yeah. means has to do with money. Yeah, but this is non fiduciary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it, it doesn't necessarily have to deal with money for you to be in a conflict, it could be a favor or it could be consideration for something else other than money. So That's what non pecuniary. Sort of yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. All in favor. Okay. Carried. So you can pull.
post that when you put the minutes on. Okay. The, um, the next item of business is that at the uh, last meeting, the uh, Public Works Committee um, presented a proposal for a pipe network model. Um, we hadn't had a chance to read it at that point, and I'm hoping that everyone has now read their briefing note on that. And we've asked Bill Ellis from the Public Works Committee to come and give us a uh, brief presentation on what this model is all about and why we should be considering it. So I'll turn it over to you for the presentation, Bill. Do you need the mic on? I don't think so because I'm going to be uh, standing up here okay. um, and we're pulling enough proof here tonight. Do you have all the lights off, Bill? No, this, this projector puts, puts a lot of light up. So. I just have to set things up here to get this in the right place. Public Works Water Resource uh, Pipe Networks to use a computer model. And there are, over the years, a number of different uh, ones available. Um, it was first developed um, about 45 years ago, in the mid-60s. Um, and it is an extraordinarily useful tool. Um, and the companies, the engineering companies, that do this kind of what in the, in the profession we call uh, civil sanitary engineering or uh, hydraulic engineering, they generally, if they're doing civil sanitary for small communities or even large cities, um, they will have expertise in use of one of these models. And so, because this model thing keeps coming up, I want to talk to you a bit about where we're at now and why the use of one of these models would be the thing to do. So, um, we've been at work on this for um, the Public Works Committee for about 10 months now, um, looking at the capital improvements um, that are needed to bring our system up to the current standards, and also, of course, to prepare for growth, which we expect to occur, um, particularly with the advent of Kensington properties. So, first of all, uh, I want to look just quickly at where we are now. The dotted line here is the Union Bay uh, Improvement District's water delivery area. And as you probably all well know, water comes from uh, Langley Lake here down in the pipeline down um, in Cloud Road to our um, treatment plant, which is somewhere right about, about here, and the storage, and then it goes down through the center of the village of Union Bay here, and then, which is quite unusual, our system has two long arms, one to the north that goes all the way up here, and one to the south that goes all the way down here to the uh, uh, Denman Island ferry landing on Buckley Bay. That is, that's kind of unusual. It also makes for certain problems with uh, operating our system effectively. So we have Langley Lake with an 8 inch main coming down here to the water treatment plant and storage with about 120,000 gallon capacity reservoir of treated water. And that in turn serves a network of pipes here in the center of town. And then as I've mentioned, we have two long arms going north and one going south. Um, the one that goes north um, goes up uh, Beaufort Avenue as an 8 inch main to the very end of Beaufort and then crosses under the highway as a 6 inch main and then from there north all the way up through um, Kilmarnock to the end of the uh, service it's, it's all 6 inch mains. To the south we have an 8 inch main 
basically going all the way down the um, Old Island Highway and running quite parallel to it and serving places like Garden Road, Mystery Beach Road, so on. But the nice thing is, down at the bottom end, we have a balancing reservoir up at the top of McKay Road, which is right next to the uh, New Island Highway. And that, even though we're a long way away, is a very good thing to have there, particularly in the case of a fire, because the uh, water has to go a long way to get there. And so the balancing reservoir that was put in a few years ago is, is a great help in keeping our pressures at the south end uh, within the range that we want to see them in. That normal range for domestic use is between uh, 40 and uh, 80 pounds per square inch. And down where we are, it's about 60. And for most of the places, except in the north. The problem we have in the north is this long uh, pipeline going up here, and I'll describe it a little more. Um, the northern end of it is only six inch diameter. And as a result, we have a problem uh, that the pressures at the north end of the system, particularly for fire flow, and we'll be getting back to that, um, are uh, quite low. Um, I also want to mention that the system we have is being well managed and well maintained by our water superintendent and his crew of one. Uh, they keep it in good shape. Um, now I want to refer to, that's the system, what's the context that we're in now? Um, first of all, we have a requirement from the public health department to filter our water. And as you all know, there's very, very fine suspended organic material that comes with the water from Langley Lake. Shows up as it stains in your uh, toilet bowls and it makes it hard doing your laundry to get white things really white. <laughs> we all know about that. Um, and there's a requirement on us to have that uh, filtration uh, capacity in place by 2015. And that filtration capacity was, it will cost somewhere around one and a half million dollars. Um, these are a couple of things though that um, Kensington Properties, when they go ahead, have said that yes, they will pay for that. But we don't know when they're going ahead. Um, so we have also in the background the prospect of a large uh, development, Kensington, which when it is built up will mean that our service capacity, the number of people that we have to service, will be six times what it is now. So that makes a big, big change to our system. And so we have to be thinking about what kind of pipes we need. Um, then, as I mentioned, we've got low water pressures up in the north end. We also have low water pressures on 6th and 7th streets and further up uh, at Green uh, Road because they are too close vertically to the reservoir. For Green Road, the water, for them to have domestic water, it has to be pumped up to them. We also have on file um, a list of upgrades to the distribution system to be made over a 10 year period from 2004 to 2014. This is the most recent update of our capital plan from 2009. And that includes, amongst other things, replacing all the six inch mains up in the north end with eight, 10, or in fact, uh, and 10 inch mains um, at a cost, if we do them all, of about a million dollars. So that's what we've got in the background. So, for the past 10 months, your board through your public works committee have been working on a plan that addresses these needs. Improve delivery pressures, in the form of sufficient fire flows at the north end and improved pressure for 6th, 7th streets and Green Road. And also, we're look, been looking at the best place 
um, to locate the water filtration plant and also with it uh, a new half million gallon uh, treated water storage tank. Both of those are needed when um, the uh, uh, Kensington goes ahead and both of those, Kensington has agreed with us that yeah, uh, that's his nickel because it's needed then for him. As far as storage goes now, uh, we're, we're at um, about at the, uh, uh, the maximum that, that we need to be adding to it. Um, just quickly, I want to show you why um, a computer model can be helpful in uh, looking at this. Here's our system. North is up the end. The water comes down here in a pipeline from Langley Lake comes to the treatment plant and the reservoir, and then comes in the 8-inch main down here on McLeod Road and an 8-inch main here on Nelson Street, and goes through here. The water coming down here can go umpty up different ways, depending on the pressures in the pipes, because it comes this way, or this way, or this way, or come this way, or this way, and also along here we have the Old Island Highway with its 8-inch main, and we also have a very good thing, an 8-inch main along Tappan Street. And again, the water coming down here, when it gets here, it can go down here, and go here, and go here. And then from there, it goes up the, to the north end. So from town, it goes up Beaufort Road to Glover Road. This is 8 inch, and then from here all the way up to the end is 6 inch. And this is the problem we have with the low, low water pressures there. And then when you get to the very top end, okay, we get up to the Kilmarnock area, and again we have uh, some loops things here, which is a good thing, but it's very, very hard to work out what the water is going to do in these things. In the old days, it was done by hand, and it would take days and days and days of trial and error calculation. The trial and error calculation is something that uh, computers are really good at iterative over and over and over. And so the computer program can do in minutes what used to take days of hand calculation. And it also can do it in looking at time, because it can do it so quickly, you can say, okay, what happens if we have a fire up here? What happens to the pressures? And you can say, okay, on this hydrant in this corner here, um, the fire engine and our fire engine will not, a new one, will can handle and, and produce up to 1,500 gallons per minute for fire flows. And so it comes along and hooks up and we say, okay, hydrant, produce 1,500 gallons a minute, and you can watch all the way back down to the whole system what happens to the pressures. Or you can put other questions, put a, a fire down at Buckley Bay and see what happens. And also, as the fire is going, these programs will plot every hour how the reservoirs go up and down. So you can tell how much you're drawing the reservoirs down. Is the reservoir big enough? Will the pressures be right? So on. So it's a wonderful um, planning tool. And that's why um, we're asking that we go to a consulting firm who specializes in that kind of work. I'm trying to catch up time. Sorry, I'm galloping here. Um, but fire truck. Um, so these are the kinds of questions which we in the, on the on the uh, committee have been approaching and trying to figure out. Okay, because one of the possibilities is um, up here is to put a, a, a balancing reservoir up here, uh, which would have the same effect of helping us as it does with the one down at the other end. But there again, what effect, how big it needs to be, and so on, 
we're not technically up to it on the committee to do that. And that's why it needs to go to a consulting firm that has this program and uses it sort of on a daily basis to, to put it in. Because to, to try to do it with, without somebody who's familiar with it, it takes a long, long time. Um, so, um, for these reasons, that's basically why um, we uh, were asking for this, this kind of a, an approach to be done. To find a consulting firm, and they're around. I've, I've identified uh, some here on the island who, who use the latest program. Um, and I, I might just say in a, a little bit, maybe a bit of boasting or whatever, but it's a long time ago. The reason I'm sold on these is I've used them off and on for 40 odd years in places from smaller than this up to cities of 100,000. And they're just a wonderful thing. A little bit of boasting with this. I was part of the team of six people who back in the mid 60s developed the program. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, maybe oh, any, ask, any questions, no, maybe I'll afterwards. Ask, no, I'll ask the board if they have any questions for you, and then we'll deal with where we want to go from here. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have a question about, my understanding is that the cost for this is about $10,000, and I'm not clear on why we would want to spend $10,000 to have ongoing access to this program as opposed to just getting an engineering firm to run the program to tell us if we need a balancing tank. Like that, sorry, I didn't make that clear. Originally, when we, when we were talking about this, we looked at the possibility of buying software so we can use it ourselves here. Um, the software just to buy the program is $8,000. And then there's about a $5,000 training fee to get you up to speed on it. And the thing is, we realize, hey, with us here, it's, it's if to start with, it's too expensive because it's a very powerful tool that is meant to be used by consulting firms. And so that's why we're, we're looking to the other thing is, $10,000 is still a lot of money. I think. <coughs> well, of, on the list that we have on the file from 2009 Capital Plan Report, for the northern area, just up at Kilmarnock, of replacing all the six inch pipes for eight or 10 inch pipes, which is what was our list was going to cost about a million dollars. It was, it was divided up into nine different chunks, each one of them just close to $100,000. Now, if that program saves us putting in just one of those, it's paid for itself ten times over. So that's, that's why, why we like it. Okay. Anyone else on the board have questions? Okay. Thank you, Gil. If you want to know more about it afterwards, I'll be happy to talk to you. Okay. Well, okay. Anyway. had a chance to read the briefing note and you had a chance to hear from Bill, um, I guess the next question that I have for the board is what you would like to do with <coughs> this, if anything, today. So, if, and it seems to me there are a number of options. We can decide that we're not going to do anything and just shelve it temporarily. Uh, we could refer it back to the capital planning committee to have them slotted into the list of priorities. Um, we could approve it. I'm, I'm not sure what you'd like to do. Well, I think I can really press the to include this in the capital plan over the next 10 years. Okay. 
to refer it back to the capital planning. We put it the capital plan uh, for maybe five years down the road or something. And I think we should be a little flexible on that too, as we see how we move over the next couple of years. We could maybe implement it sooner or later. But I think if, if we allow for it now, then we don't have to allow for it later. So you and we get it in place so that it's you mean, available. So are you suggesting that we spend money then to put it in there or later? Right. Or but no, time? but we make allowance for it in the capital plan. So that it can be approved as part of the capital plan. <coughs> capital plan. Mm -hmm. and that's one okay. So a seconder. I'll second that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bruce? Anybody else? I guess um, I, I think that um, something else that we probably need to just make sure that we all understand is that there is a potential for finding somebody to help pay for this. I mean, the, uh, the regional district will need this kind of a system when they start to implement the regional water strategy. Um, Kensington will probably see how we might proceed with negotiations. Um, we've also had one meeting with the CBRD, and that was with our entire board and the administrator with uh, the chair of the CBRD and Bruce Jolliffe, who is our Area A um, director, and their two staff, their executive director and their um, property Kevin Lorette, I'm not sure what his title is. He's kind of the second in command kind of guy. So we did have that one meeting with the CBRD. Um, the board has also had two meetings with Don McRae uh, since our last meeting. And those meetings were designed primarily just to uh, fill him in on where we're at and to ensure that he was still going to help support us in Victoria. So because I know everybody's interested in this issue, I thought that I might talk a little bit about the position that we've taken and why we've taken that position and a bit about the process and how it's kind of unfolded. Um, basically what we have said to the CVRD is that we're <coughs> not prepared to transfer the water license or our water supply assets. Um, and the reason for that are, we have a number of reasons, one of them being that this board believes that we've been given a very clear mandate from the community to make UBID work. If we give away a huge chunk of our assets, there's not a lot of point in us keeping just the distribution system. And if we give away the entire water system, why would we just keep the fire department? So we really don't see that breaking off big chunks of what we currently look after is making you good work. And I think that it jeopardizes our ability to do that. One of the other big reasons is that we believe that it's premature for the CVRD to be asking us to do this at this point. Um, the regional water strategy so far is only still a number of proposals and recommendations on how they're going to do this. Um, they have not defined their management structure um, and they're looking at millions of dollars to implement this plan. So we're not prepared to hand over our assets when we have no idea what our role within the regional water strategy might be or what kind of a say we might have on our future water management. Okay. Um, I guess, I mean, the other issue is that this community has a very kind of strong um, sense of pride 
in the fact that we not only have the water licenses that allow us to draw water, but we actually own the lake bed. We own land around the lake. We own the right of way. Um, and it's a huge asset that we don't think we should just give away. Now, on the other side of the argument is, does, does it matter what government manages your water system for you? I mean, we're all going to have to pay, no matter whether it's UBID or the CBRD. Um, governments are all mandated by the same legislation, whether it's the CBRD or the Improvement District. But we're very strongly committed to the notion that this is really bad timing, and we really object to being held for ransom because of the Master Development Agreement and Kensington. Mm -hmm. And we really do not believe that Kensington's development permits should be tied to our willingness to enter into a vague, as yet undefined, regional water strategy. So throughout all the negotiations, our position has not changed. Um, the entire board has been involved in those discussions with the board and their senior staff. Um, there is some movement, and we're at the stage now where the board has given our administrator direction on positions to take, and we have asked her to do some work with the regional district. Um, regarding moving some of this forward and moving towards getting something in writing that we can all agree to. So, I don't know what more I can say about outcome other than it's complicated and it's difficult and there are legal implications on all sides um, and we're working our way through it. So, uh, at this point we have uh, more meetings planned and uh, we're hoping that we're going to be able to resolve this this spring. Okay. So, we keep telling people this is our number one priority and it's certainly become our big consuming activity. Okay. So, that's that. Oh, maybe we should have the, the government not taking a position to force us to hand over the license. No, the government is indicating to mm -hmm. us that they will not force us to do this. So, so we'll work mm -hmm. um, I think just the only other thing that I would like to add is that I think that as a board, we have um, really spend a lot of time, but we've also really come together in terms of taking a strong stand and having some really good discussions about the pros and cons and strategies and how we might move this issue forward. So. Let's move on to correspondence. First item is Crystal Water Suppliers Association Conference. So you have the notice in your package. Um, UBIT is a member of the Coastal Water Suppliers Association, as um, are about 40 other improvement districts on Vancouver Island. This is their annual conference. This year it's going to be in Parksville. Um, we have a board policy that says that during the term, each trustee should attend one external conference, which was in part a recommendation from the Ombudsman. Um, so I would like to um, maybe see a motion that we send someone to this conference, or more than one. 
I'll make that motion. I'll just, uh, make a motion that we send two trustees to Parksville. It's on a daily basis. It won't be overnight. Uh, we'll see what the brochure is, whether it's Saturday on Sunday or... But uh, it'll just be a, a day trip down for... Uh, I recommend that we send two trustees to, uh, to that AGM. I'll make that motion. Seconder. Seconder. Any discussion? So they they wouldn't be staying overnight. It's, it's no, June first. It's a day trip down there. <coughs> okay. And uh, what's the cost? Correspondence is a letter from the engineering firm of Binney Engineering, um, and this is about a sub subdivision. And maybe I'll get Ruth to uh, talk about this. This is just an information item at this point. Right. Um, this is a, a request um, to provide water services to a lot, which uh, for a proposed subdivision. Um, one of the reasons why they've um, provided us with this letter at this time is because it's going to require some additional work. It's um, a lot above. Um, it will, they've, they've received permission from the Ministry of Transportation to extend Bray Road um, above Garvin Road onto the lands, um, but they do not yet have um, a crossing agreement in place. Um, there is a crossing agreement in place between UBID and the railway company, so those matters still have to be worked out between ourselves and the developer and the railway before we can um, decide whether or not we can provide water to that particular um, development. And it, I don't believe it's, um, I believe it's in the area that where the CBRD would require five acre lots, but I don't yet have all the information um, available. Mm -hmm. And I'll be doing further work on it mm -hmm. to, to make recommendations to the board. Okay. So at some point, this may come back to us yes. for approval. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The uh, next item of business is a uh, letter from Dave Godfrey. Um, and in that letter, he expresses concern over the elections policy and uh, questions the board's authority to create such a policy. Um, we have asked Bruce to respond on behalf of the board. Um, this is clearly within the board's authority. Um, no doubt Ruth will quote some legislative references and uh, the policy is uh, fine. So it would just be a response basically saying that. And then we have uh, the letter from Oyster River. This just came in today actually, so the board has not seen this so far. Um, it's all of the uh, fire departments in the Comox Valley have mutual aid agreements with each other to help out in case of a large fire that they can't respond to or an event where they need extra help. Those uh, agreements expire on May the 9th, 2012. And um, the um, Comox Valley Regional District through the um, Comox Valley Fire Services Department uh, would like to revise those mutual aid agreements to update them. However, there is not time to do that before May the 9th. So all of the um, different 
local governments are being asked to simply agree to approve the existing mutual aid agreements for another year to give them time to work through the changes that uh, they would be recommending for the mutual aid agreements. So if I could have a motion from this board to um, authorize the administrator on behalf of UDIT to enter into a mutual aid agreement for one more year to extend to extend to extend to extend it for, yeah. for one more year. Okay. Alan? Yeah. Okay. Seconder. Alan? Any questions at all? Okay. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Okay. Reports. So, Ruth, we'll have you start off, and you're combining your <coughs> excuse me, administration and financial reports in one. It's a fairly brief report. I've been away for a big chunk of the last month. And but then we've been spending a lot of time in meetings doing things that we can't talk about. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, we have our income statements now for the first two months of the year. And when we review, the, review those statements, um, we can see that we've uh, completed our annual billing for, for the parcel tax. That always happens once in the year, at the beginning of the year. So all of the parcel tax has now been billed. Um, the amount that was um, actually billed was $181,480. And that is within $520 of the $182,000 that we had budgeted for in 2012. So we're very close to what we had budgeted. Since our parcel tax is due in two installments, only the first installment has been paid in most cases. Most people will pay the $130 uh, March 1st, and then they'll pay the second installment September 1st. But in looking at that, um, I also had a chance to review our accounts receivable. And we currently have approximately $110,000 in receivables, which is mostly made up of the second installment of the parcel tax. And as well, there's still some current water tolls not yet paid that are not yet overdue. But also in reviewing the receivables, it's become apparent to me that we have a small proportion of landowners that, um, whose accounts are not current. Um, I'd say that the vast majority of our landowners pay all of their parcel tax and water bills in a very timely way. But it looks like about 4% of our landowners are beginning to fall behind. And at the end of the year, I, I applied the penalties, um, which are um, payable on overdue accounts. I, I applied those to those accounts. But I think this year, now that we've caught up on a number of things, uh, as I've oriented myself to the affairs of the uh, improvement district, I think that um, I'm going to have to start taking some action to collect overdue accounts. So part of my focus going forward will be to ensure that everyone is contributing their share to the costs of the water system. And then just one other small item is that with respect to the audit, the auditors have completed all the work that they had to do in our office. Um, I provided them with all the account reconciliations, the inventories, and any of the rationales that they requested of me. And I expect to hear shortly that our financial statements for 2011 are completed. I have a motion to accept Bruce's report for information. I'll make a motion. And all in favor? <coughs> Carried. Um, you also have your uh, financial reports, right? So I am assuming there are no questions on those financial statements that you got. I see we've collected 16.2 for realm cost charges this year, is that right? That's two, two properties, yes. Do you know where they are at all? Just offhand, I'll have on that. Just no idea. Doesn't matter. Well, I don't offhand. No, that's fine. Should I be providing that information? No, I was just surprised that we had two. That was all. Okay. I was, I was surprised. I said I wanted a question, uh, and I don't know if it's privy to answer or not, but I see we have had a donation of $500. Would it be privy where that came from? or? 
Or do you know? Um, you? I don't know off the top of my head. No, that's fine. You asked me to look into it, I could have. No, I, I don't know. No, I just, I just you might not know. I was just, just curious, that's all. And fire report. Okay. Uh, there was no fire rescue committee meeting in March. Um, we handled a lot of stuff back in February, and that was to do with the repairs and on the hall. Um, they haven't been completed yet, um, and um, so we're working on that. Hopefully, they'll be done in the next couple of months. We've got three quotes in now for uh, asphalt paving of the parking lot, and. Uh, we're going to decide shortly who will get the contract, and hopefully the work will be done sometime next month. The fire department responded to two incidents since the last report. They include one first responder and one public service call. And there's currently, of course, no ban on open burning in the coastal fire area right now. And there's a semi-annual safety inspection on the fire vehicles scheduled for June 4th. So that's Standard every year, and uh, pretty short report, so that's it. Any questions for him? I have a motion to accept for information. Make a motion, Mr. Bruce. Please. All those in favor? Carry. Please, public works. Okay, now public works committee met on the first of March. Uh, of the public works as a whole, and uh, everybody's pretty satisfied. The uh, surface water inflow to Langley Lake remains this thing on, yeah. normal for this time of the year. Uh, our turbidity levels are higher because of all the runoff. Uh, we're getting 2.5 in and 2.55 out. But they are going down as the heavy rain seem to be diminishing a bit. And uh, with the decrease in turbidity levels, the chlorine uh, addition to the water has been turned down. And it's being monitored very closely. And especially at the far end of the system, at the southern far end. Uh, in view of the continuing elevated turbidity, which is caused by organic particles coming through. Uh, our superintendent is monitoring the trihal or methanite or some damn thing like that. <laughs> some little bugs, I think, that crawl around in there. And uh, it's steady. And he adjusts the chlorine level again to, to uh, address that problem. Uh, one leak was repaired in the usual place, up the uh, Lomonic area. And uh, those leaks were the result of whoever put those pumps in in the first place doing lousy work. Uh, we have a water leak in the system below the McLeod Lake Reservoir, and uh, we're losing about five cubic meters a day. Dan is now trying to find where it is, but with the ground being saturated, all the water lying around pretty hard to do. Uh, to tell you that's interesting. You all know, I presume, that our water treatment plant is on leased land up at the top of the Cloud Road. And we are looking to find a permanent site that we own. So we had a meeting with Island Timberland, and they have indicated a piece of land that they could be willing to uh, let us have. And uh, this is a very a good site, and we'd all very much like to get it. Uh, however, no negotiations have been started at this point, am I right, Ruth? It's, it's preliminary. extremely preliminary. preliminary. And uh, as we go into the negotiations, it's going to be in camera, so we won't be able to tell you much about that. But uh, at least we are moving to get a piece of land of our own there that when we put a treatment plant in we will own the thing and we won't be subject to a lease. Um, I think that's about the only thing. The uh, rest of us goes on to talk about uh, 
the system that Bill told us about tonight. Uh, otherwise, the uh, public work system is moving along fairly well, and Dan's got his. Dan is on top of it. He keeps a good eye on everything, so we've got no problems there. So that's my report. Thank you. Any questions for Cleve? Um, I'd just like a, a bit of a clarification. You know, it's, it's nice to think that uh, Timber West would give us that property, but. I hope he says they're going to so give it to us. We have to clarify that. Yeah, if, if they would be, we would have they to. They made it available. Yeah, we're making it available. It, yeah. <laughs> It's not saying they're going to finish negotiation. Yeah. 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 I don't think we're going to get that one. Yeah. I have a motion to accept Cleve's report for information. I'll make that motion. Alan, seconder. And all in favor? Aye. Carried. And the bylaw policy and procedures committee uh, is not meeting until next week. So we haven't had a meeting since our last board meeting um, and we're continuing to plug away at policies. Hopefully we're nearing the end of governance issues and we can move on to finance. Okay, new business. Okay, the first item is to talk about the uh, Raven coal mine and this kind of um, became a bit of a, an issue for the board as the result of a question from one of our landowners, I think two meetings ago, when we were asked what we were doing about it. So we've done a bit of research and we've had some conversations with others, and I think we're probably getting ready to um, maybe make some decisions. Um, every... Um, government body in the Comox Valley, so Courtney, Comox, Cumberland, and the Regional District, as well as Ships Point Improvement District and Fanny Bay Improvement District, <coughs> we understand have all li written letters to Raven Coal um, expressing concern about water sources and potential contamination of water sources, um, and have supported the notion of aquifer mapping. Uh, Union Bay has not dealt with this issue formally at all at this point and I think that before we get into um, an actual environmental impact assessment process it would be timely for us to at least get our concerns on the table. Um, Ruth and I have had some conversations about what we could ask for um, and I, I think that uh, certainly if everyone else is asking for aquifer mapping, that makes sense. But we're in a bit of a unique situation in that through some um, water monitoring that our public works committee has done over the course of the winter, it appears that at least part of the water that goes into Langley Lake comes from underground. So there's some runoff, but, but there is there appears to be some underground spring somewhere. We have no idea where that spring starts. It could be within our watershed, which wouldn't necessarily be impacted by the first phase of Raven Coal, but it could be 50 miles away from here. We have no idea. So um, we may want to consider asking uh, Raven Coal, and from my experience in working with the oil industry, um, proponents of big projects are always being asked to provide money. So I think we probably should consider asking not only for aquifer mapping, but for some money for you to do some independent hydrological studies so that we can confirm that uh, our water supply is not going to be negatively impacted by a potential coal mine. So maybe we could have a little bit of discussion about that and a motion, and then there's another step that I'd like to talk about after that. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about some kind of base monitoring of the water that uh, 
that we're getting now, but so we want to do some I testing to too. Step. Oh, that's the next step? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think we should talk first of all about some kind of correspondence. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. that would be a yeah. step. And asking for them to support it financially is a good move anyway. Mm -hmm. I can only say no, but you can certainly ask. Well, I mean, I think as the proponent of the mine, that they have an obligation to uh, yes. prove that they're not going to screw up our water system. Mm -hmm. Have any of the other recruitment districts or municipalities had responses from them? My understanding is that they have not. But, yeah, not yeah. Very, but that's sort of not very far into the environmental review process yet, and that, that normally is part of the environmental review process before anything can be approved. They haven't even started the that's actual right. environmental yeah. review. They've, they've done a public consultation, mm -hmm. and they're, they've responded to all of the questions that were raised through that public consultation, and then the next step is to decide on an environmental impact assessment review. And that's why it would be appropriate for us to do it now to get that letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I have a motion then? I, I kind of put together a little motion here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mother. So I'd like to make a, a motion to ask the administrator to prepare a letter to Raven Cole uh, expressing concern about Langley Lake and requesting funds for UBID to complete. Uh, and an independent hydrological study, including active or mountain. Okay. Seconder. Bruce. Any other discussion? Just get that letter out as soon as we can. All okay. everybody in favor? Okay. The next step, well, we uh, just to let you know, we had a, a very interesting coffee afternoon with the Ships Point Improvement District Board recently, and we shared a lot of kind of informal information, and uh, one of the, uh, the things that we discovered during that discussion was that Ships Point have already begun to do baseline studies on heavy metals in their water system so that they have a baseline established uh, before any mining activity happens. Um, now, what we're talking about would be um, in addition to the regular kinds of testing that Dan has done for bugs and all that kind of stuff. This would be heavy metals like mercury and arsenic and things like that. So I'm wondering if you would like to ask the administrator and our public public work superintendent <coughs> to arrange for biannual or annual um, baseline full spectrum, full spectrum analysis. Okay. Okay. Full spectrum analysis. <laughs> Whatever it's called. <laughs> no. No. This would this would look at heavy metals in the water. So, you know, things like arsenic and cadmium and things like that that aren't supposed to be there. But could be there as a result of but you could establish a correlation in the event that it went way up and the yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we can monitor it if we start now and we've got a few years worth of data. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So we might so be drinking all this stuff now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we are, we better find out. <laughs> well, I guess that's a good reason for throwing a bit of rye into the uh, <laughs> water. There. You're going to put a barrel up at the reservoir? Yeah, something like that. Okay, so the motion I have is uh, to further protect Hubert's water supply, to make the motion that the, the board direct the administrator to have water samples pre-treatment um, taken twice a year, January and July, be uh, sent to a recognized lab for full spectrum analysis for all heavy metals and other potential contaminants. This will enable a benchmarking of our water source now and for the comparison in the future. Okay, good. Seconder. Please. Any other discussion? Okay, all in favor? 
carried. Thank you. It's just to make a point that we will copy all of the appropriate ministers and everybody else in the world. Okay, the next item is uh, request for proposals. Um, for some time, the uh, Public Works Committee and the Board have been kind of debating how we need to proceed with an engineering firm. And um, we've talked about some of the kinds of things that we are going to need engineers to do for us. And um, in anticipation that this Kensington issue gets resolved, very quickly after that, uh, the board is going to be required to have an engineer uh, approve the water treatment plant. So we also have another of another several items that, that we need an engineer for in terms of uh, subdivision planning, uh, in terms of waterworks, in terms of helping with our capital plan, um, and we really do need to identify who that engineer is going to be, or whether we need one engineering firm for quick and easy short things and somebody else for some of the bigger projects. So this item basically um, is to suggest that we ask our administrator to issue a request for proposals from as many engineering firms as we can come up with. Um, to have the Public Works Committee and the staff look at those proposals, to select two or maybe three that could then come and do a presentation to the board, and then the board would make a decision about selecting someone. Um, and hoping that we could do all of that by the end of June. So, if I could have a motion. Okay. I'll move that uh, we ask the administrator to uh, contact engineering companies to issue proposals for the upcoming projects that we're going to have or going to need. Okay. Seconder? Oh, sorry. Bruce, any discussion? I think something we could add to that when you contact those engineering firms is to uh, find out which one of them can uh, do the uh, computer pathway model as well. Um, yeah. And, if we can and a specific expertise in civil sanitary engineering, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Bill could probably assist with names. Any other comments? All in favor? Okay. Carried. Thank you. And the last new business item is a safety deposit box for you guys. So maybe I'll ask Bruce to talk about this one. Do you want Mike? No, I'll be fine, I think. Okay. Well, it's recently come to our attention that, uh, well, not too long ago, that the UBID, we have a safety deposit box at the, uh, at the Union Big Credit Union. Lo and behold, we have no idea what's in it, and <laughs> I mean, none whatsoever. Anyways, I was asked by the board to... Uh, to retrieve the contents and uh, come back with my findings. So I went to Craig Union today and I came to find out that uh, we need to make a motion to assign two or more people to uh, have authority over this safe deposit box as the uh, previous assignees are no longer with the board. So there's, there's nobody to uh, sign in or out. You want to have a look at what's, what's in the safe deposit box. So uh, that was number one. Number two is uh, the contents were unknown. We have no idea what's in the safe deposit box. The contents were last viewed nine years ago. <laughs> and four, the location of the keys is unknown or they've been lost. So nobody, Ruth has looked around and we haven't been able to find keys for it. Uh, I took over the post office box key today, they didn't work, but... <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it'll come back.
cost about two hundred dollars to have a, a locksmith come in and he'll have to drill the lock out on this thing. They got, apparently that's the only way that uh, you can access it. And uh, I don't know what you pay sixty or eighty dollars a year for a safety deposit box, so we paid a thousand dollars to have this thing sit there. The contents reviewed and determine whether it's necessary to keep the box or abandon it. That would be my motion. God, okay. me, that can clean. Okay. Any discussion? Just one question. Do we have a safe in the, in the office here? If there's anything valuable, do we get to split them? No, I'm sorry. Questions or do we have a safe in the We have a lockable um, fireproof filing cabinet. Which isn't the same as a safe. Okay. Uh, no, but it's very it's secure. It's a protection. So it's possible oh, that that, and this is deeds or something, it's possible that that can be used. Well, most of our, most of our important keys. documents are in that fireproof cabinet. Okay. Mm. So we have an alternative to locate the documents if there's something like that. And the money can be distributed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 All in favor. Okay. Okay. Carried. Okay, so that's the end of our business. Um, we'll open it now to questions from the floor. Okay, hey, Walter. Uh, curiosity, any further discussions with renting the school out to uh, any next school programs, or has there been any movement or anything? <coughs> any, not, nothing doing there? Okay. Yeah, maybe you can reply. Well, we're, we're waiting. We're, um, were you at the last meeting when I had said that we're, we were not going to do anything? Uh, rent it out to anybody because it would have to be at this point a short term lease because we're uh, our mortgage is up for renewal in October and we don't know what's going to sort of happen with that. We have a few issues with the ownership of the school involved. So um, unless somebody approaches us and wants it for a couple of months and if they you know if the zoning fits then we probably would. Um, I uh, learned today that, um, the, that the credit union is um, wanting to continue the lease till the end of the month, so we do, or the end of the year, so we do have, you know, still have that income coming in that we haven't anticipated having. That you know, for another, month. they were originally going to finish up the end of April or something. Yeah, so now we've got that income. So, you know, but um, no, we're not, uh, we're not planning to. Have you got somebody in mind or something? Well, no, I, st I, st I still kind of think that the, the university up there, surely the goodness, they must have some night school courses or something like that. But mm -hmm. it, well, once again, you it, can't it's, commit. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's for the university. It, it, yeah, so it, it, like I can see, um, you know, I, me for one, I want to I go back to night school anyway, but I'd rather come here if they yeah, can bring yeah. the course here yeah. rather than travel all the way there. Because it's a small area and it would probably be about 10 or 15 students anyway. Right. Well, hopefully we'll have it ironed out by the by the end of the year, and then maybe in the new year we might look at something like oh, that. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Anyone else? Joe. <coughs> Carol, seems to me that the big question for everybody is the water license. Can you tell me, step by step, number one, what has happened to date, and who's taking part? on behalf of the board with the discussions. Um, <coughs> yeah, I think so. Maybe I'll, if, if I get stuck, somebody can help me out. Um, in November, uh, well, in last June, our board had its first meeting with the CBRD. And um, at that meeting, we indicated that we didn't like the, um, the clause in the MDA about transferring the water agreement, but we had only just come into office, so we said to the CBRD that we would take some time to consult with our landowners and to um, reach a decision as a board on what we wanted to do about that. Carol, who's we? The board. Complete. Complete. Yes. Okay. yes. Um, so in November, we wrote a letter to the CBRD and the Ministry um, saying that we uh, did not want to transfer the water license, 
that we felt that the, um, uh, the, the master development agreement, which obligated us to do that, um, was uh, not enforceable because UBID was not a party to that agreement. And that we did not think that it was in the best interests of our community to do it. And over the course of the summer, we were getting conflicting information from different ministries and different staff within the provincial government. So um, in, in December, one of our volunteers um, kind of buttonholed our MLA and said, we've been trying to get some meetings and we're not having much success. What can you do about that? And that kind of started the ball rolling with uh, a meeting with three ministers. An initial meeting with Don McCray. Yes, we had an initial meeting with Don McCray where we talked about our position, what the issues were, and asked him to help us, which he agreed to do. And I must say, he's been very um, involved and proactive. Mm -hmm. In, in doing that, um, then we had, then we were invited. Three of us were invited to meet with the three ministers in Portland, and that was in January. January. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, the CBRD had um, four people there, and we were told we could bring three. So Ruth and I and Bruce attended. Um, we felt that um, we were probably the best ones to be going and Alan was out of town and Anne's involved with the fire department so that's how the three got chosen. Um, from there, uh, that very same afternoon, we had a, our entire board it, and Alan was back by then, right, at that first meeting. Or yeah. no, you no, know, it was a meeting. Okay. That afternoon we had a meeting of everyone except Alan with the chair of the board from the CBRD, Bruce Jolas, Deborah Oakman, and um, uh, Kevin Lovett. And we began to um, talk about it. Um, we presented a very long list of um, questions that we had and issues that we thought were of concern, ranging from financial issues to protecting our staff to what would the implications be down the road to, I, we, had, we had a whole page of issues and questions that um, the CBRD was not aware of some of those issues. Uh, and then we've kind of agreed to a process since then of regular meetings. Um, and as I said, we you know we've had two meetings with John McRae. We've had meetings with the CBRD. Um, I've had some conversations with uh, <coughs> deputy ministers. You know, so um, speaking and Ruth has been Kevin speaking to our lawyer and to Kevin Lorat and. So there's been a lot of activity trying to find a way. And, and the problem is that the CBRD doesn't want to remove this clause from their MDA because then that will create major problems for the Master Development Agreement. So we're trying to find a way to satisfy the MDA and at the same time not have us commit to transferring our water license. Even if it's a date beyond an agreement with Kensington? The problem is that the um, regional water strategy has now taken, what, five years? Okay, They're still only making recommendations and, and presenting options. It could be 25 years down the road before the region, we know what the regional water strategy is going to be. And, I mean, we're not going to commit our community to something that we have no idea what it will be in 25 years. 
So, if, I mean, we're really in a, a catch-22 position here, and, and we, we feel between a rock and a hard place. I mean, the community wants this water treatment system and, and this <coughs> development to go ahead, um, and we're not prepared to give away our assets. Well, we want the project to go ahead too, by the way. We're, we're mm -hmm. firmly committed to the project moving forward as long as uh, we don't have to uh, give up our water license. So, uh, What's been managed? It's a matter of working around some terminology. And, He's not uh, part of this discussion. Carol, do you feel that the water license is an asset that can absolutely. be used in negotiations? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. The ownership of the land is a plus two. So yeah. Carol, you mentioned the MDA Master Development Agreement. Is that, is that KIP's agreement? That's between the CBRD and Kensington. Yes. And so Brian has no... Why isn't he at these meetings? Because he's, it's, not, it's not the issue. The issue isn't with him. It's with us. The issue is between the CBRD and you. They want us to give them their our water license. That's the issue. Yes. And control of our lake water treatment plant, the whole supply side of the water system. So all we would be left with are the pipes in the ground. So meanwhile, Brian's been able to grant something like that. Yeah. Well, we believe that we're working towards a solution. We yeah, are. We are trying. I mean, 15 I years mean, later. Yeah. Well, we only just began this. We've only just begun this, mm -hmm. and I mean, quite frankly, in two months, I think that we have seen quite a bit of movement. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we certainly have a, a much better understanding of what the issues and the implications are, okay. and some of the limitations <coughs> that we have in what we can do and what the CBRD can do. Um, and given the fact that UBIT's relationship with the CBRD up until recently hasn't been that great, you know. So I mean, we're we're all pretty committed to talking and working it out and developing a a long-term working relationship, you know. So I think we've accomplished a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, yes. And, uh, John. The, uh, Sorry. Uh, Deborah Oakman said the other day. This is a learning curve for them as well. So we're not the only ones that are trying to figure things out. And those are her words. I was just wondering, uh, Carol, whether we, the board had uh, the expertise behind it to properly to try to evaluate the value of the assets, which you have you know, described, and, and I guess uh, at the end of the day is we can try to quantify that. And I'm just wondering whether the board has enough uh, expertise and support behind it to uh, make those evaluations? Well, we have we have some information about the value of our assets. Um, in 2010, the auditors put a value on our waterworks system, okay, which was kind of a, a new um, thing. And it was valued at $4,400,000 okay. for our waterworks system. So that includes all of the distribution system as well. Um, we also have some assessments for um, Langley Lake and, and the supply side. So the, um, the lake itself, um, the land around the lake, and the um, right-of-way that we own, which is down the Cloud Road partway, uh, was valued at 72000 So we, we do have a sense. We, I mean, we also have a lawyer that um, is working with us. Um, and we're not, we're not at the stage where we're actually trying to put costs on things yet. I mean, that may come further down the road if you're actually looking at transferring. We're still dealing with principles. Right. That's where we need an engineering firm as well as, uh, like McElhaney has done a lot of uh, that work previously in a in our cap in an old capital plan. They've identified a lot of the costs of the uh, all the various lengths of the water service throughout 
throughout the community. So there are some numbers around, but uh, that's another reason we need an engineer and then sometime in the future is to determine what those costs are. So in a nutshell, where we're at is, I presume we have reasonable support from the CBRD Board of Directors to have a work around this issue, and it's really just dealing with the, I guess we call them bureaucrats that put together this proviso in the MDA that uh, is causing a real problem. Well, I mean, the regional board approved the MDA, so, I mean, whether the bureaucrats stuck it in there, they approved it. They approved the MDA, but not yeah. the water. They don't have a water strategy approved, right? Um, well, they've approved a document as the water, the beginnings of a water strategy, but it's still just recommendations. Okay. And uh, how, much were, how much money were they asking for? $50 million or something to complete it. To implement it. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a long term. It's a long ways away. This is kind of very premature. Mm -hmm. and I, I think that's our whole argument, and as Carol's already said that, this, this whole thing is just very premature, and uh, we'd be foolish to enter, enter an agreement like that, you know, 10 years down the road, we have no idea whatsoever what you'd be getting yourself into. Well, I think your, your thought that you might have a chance of having it completed by springtime would be phenomenal. I think the community would agree with that, so we give you a lot of credit for the work you've been doing, and uh, carry on. Thank you. Bill? Is, is there any uh, thought about how you could, uh, with you and the regional district, uh, make the, uh, the settlement of this water issue something that's ongoing and let Kenzie to get on with his business? Mm -hmm. And just while well, you guys are scratching the, you know, you still have the water. Can you just some, make some kind of a, an arrangement? Say that's what we're trying to do. That's, that's what we're trying to do. Keep the boat going in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what we're, what we're trying, trying to do. Yeah. We're trying to find a way that is going to allow Kensington to move ahead and to satisfy the MDA and still protect you in Bay. Yeah. I think it's been batted around, but I just want to know what the most current thing is. The logical thing is when they're still working on this regional water system. And like you say, it could be 25 years down the line. Why can't we get a memorandum of, of agreement or whatever they're called that when it's all in place and when it's, it's ready to be a workable situation, then approach us about joining part of it? Why can't that be settled now? Uh, we're working on it. So they won't even accept that. Well, it's not that it's that's not the issue. It's it's a legal issue and it's it's the the wording that has to be in these agreements. Um, but we're all working towards a compromise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and it may incorporate some of those elements yeah. at the end of the day. Exactly. But that that's exactly what we're all trying to work on right now is this work around this requirement in the MDA. And that's, that's what we've asked Ruth to do some extra legwork with the CBRD about, is to try and get something more that we as politicians on both sides can then look at and say, yeah, this is getting closer, or no, we're still not there. You said 2015 we had to have the water treatment plant in. I was under yes. the understanding it was 2013. It was extended. Well, there's there's yeah. steps, yeah. and you have to have it started by two Yes, we have yeah. to have but designs done. So you you've got what eight eight months? March is 2014. <coughs> 2014. Well, you still have you have a little bit of time. But yeah. if this keeps going on and it has gone on, yeah. what provisions have you as the board got in place for us as uh, residents, we're going to have to pay for that water system mm -hmm. that Anthony is in the board. What will the outcome, what's going to cost for household? Well, the part of the process here is that the capital plan that's being developed right now is looking at two options. We're looking at the option of if Kensington goes ahead, these are the things that we need to do for capital and this is what it will cost. If Kensington doesn't go ahead, and this is the cost, and this is what we're going to have to do on our own. And quite frankly, we're probably talking about borrowing <coughs> because we haven't got savings. 
Yeah, that VHA uh, requirement, 4321, that's negotiable deadlines. Yes, uh, that's it's possible. They are, yes. They say June 13, June 14, yes. if you're not there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, they have down. extended it once already. Yeah, but it's still negotiable. We can, I mean, we can work around what the requirements yeah. are. Sure. Yeah. So if the NDP get in the next election and they throw it all into a new, we just don't do anything? How's it all <laughs> work? <laughs> well, if they want us to do it, I think they should be chipping in some money for us to do it. Because why the hell should we pay for it? Well, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'd would love to hear that opinion from <laughs> Any other questions? What happens if you don't do it? Do they put us all in jail? No, we get deemed. No, but they may turn us over to the regional district. Mm -hmm. Ah. I, well, I mean, I have no idea what they may do, but no if we're if we're not compliant with yeah. legislative requirements, then it'd be interesting to see if you just you know, held their feet to the fire instead of them holding you all into the fire. Right? You know, it's, we're always running scared. It just goes against nature, right? Well, I think part of the problem is that when provincial and federal governments pass legislation that imposes new conditions, um, the money doesn't always follow, you know, so they say you have to do it, but it's up to you to uh, figure out how, you know. Um, I remember when I had a safety deposit box in Vancouver, I never had a key. You went in, yeah. so a person came with you yep. with a master key, yep. they opened the safety deposit box and handed it to you. I've yes. never had safety deposit box key. Why is our credit union not like that? I don't no. know. It was the same in England when I was in England for my mum. We have a safety deposit box and then we have the key. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 So you don't have to have all the keys. Don't yeah. okay. yeah. yeah. okay. yeah. 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 Okay. So anything else? Good job. Hey, thank you all for coming. Mm -hmm. okay.